Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. And today I want to give you an overview of this Sansui Master Integrated Amplifier AUX11. I did a video a few months ago when I first acquired this amplifier and it occurred to me that I haven't actually done a full tour so I thought after about a few months or so of listening I'd do that and also just let you my, know my impressions of having listened to this amplifier. I guess all I can do really is reiterate everything that I said in that first video. This amplifier is absolutely amazing. There's quite a few people out there who think that this is the pinnacle of integrated amplifiers from Sansui. Um, I think you'd have to look pretty far to find any other Sansui's. It'd be a very small number, I think, that would be as good, if not better, than this. So, yeah, the AUX11 is fantastic. The thing that I noted is that the sound stage is wonderful. And yeah, it is absolutely wonderful to be able to position just where in front of me instruments are. It's like I feel I can reach out and touch where that instrument is. So the sound stage is absolutely amazing, as one would expect. The sound is amazing. I'm using this amplifier with my JBL 4333A studio monitors. So yeah, it sounds absolutely amazing. So let's dive in and go through a full tour of this amplifier front and back. So starting here on the left hand side, we have the power button. Also note, this thing is so huge, I've got the camera way back is the only way I can get the whole thing into the shot. It's enormous. So, power button, phone's output, which I have not used. Speaker selectors, uh, speakers off. I guess that's if you want to use the phones, I suppose. Um, or speakers A, speakers B, or A and B. So then you have your power amp level. So you can run this with only the power amp operating. Uh, and, and not use the preamp stage. So that's what these gains are for, left and right. So I usually run these at full gain. Then here is where you select whether it operates as an integrated amplifier or whether you want it to run just as a power amplifier. And I use it, sometimes I use it as a power amplifier when I feed it with my AccuPhase preamp or sometimes I just feed it directly with the DAC. It just depends on, on what I'm doing and what sort of a mood I'm in, I suppose. So you can have two external inputs. You can select from those or the integrated amp. So uh, up here you have your master volume control. Then here you sort of like standard uh, jump and subsonic buttons that are very common on these uh, Japanese kind of amplifiers. So in this case, the jump gives you 14 dB drop in the signal and the subsonic is a 16 Hertz cutoff. So then over here on the right hand side, we have our input selections. So inputs one and two are for phono stages. And then there's also a selection as whether you want MM or MC and also for the MC, whether you want high or, lang high or low gain. The reviews generally say that the phono stage on this thing is absolutely excellent and um, I have no reason to dispute that. Um, I don't have the highest um, turntable deck in the world in terms of specs or performance, but um, it certainly sounds very good on the phono stage of this amplifier. Tuner and auxiliary inputs and then down here we have our uh, tape standard sort of tape controls as you would expect from an amplifier of this vintage. So that's everything that we find on the front. Let's, let's now turn it around and have a look at the back. Okay, here we are at the back of this fantastic AUX11. So over on this side, which is actually the right hand side, we have uh, all of our um, connectivity. So I believe that these RCA connectors have been replaced by the dealer that I purchased this amplifier off. 
So here we have our ground binding post for turntables. Then we have left and right to here. So we have Phono 1, Phono 2, both of them can be MM or MC. Our tuner and our auxiliary input, so you remember the corresponding controls on the front panel. So here we have our uh, tape inputs and outputs, tape 1, rec and play, tape 2, rec and play. And then down here we have our power amp, uh, preamp inputs and outputs. So here are your preamp outputs. If you were to want to only use the preamp section of this integrated amplifier, which in itself is very, very good, and route to uh, a, another external amplifier, um, it'd want to be super high end because this amplifier is 160 watts a channel. It's pretty darn good. Uh, and then also here you have your power amp in. If you want to bypass the preamp stage of this integrated and just use it as a power amp, that's where you'd connect to there. So that's those. Then over here we have our speaker binding posts, uh, system A, system B, four ohms to 16 ohms on these. And then, as usual on these kinds of things, your AC outlets, one switched and three unswitched, which again, I, I don't really use those at all at this stage. You can see that this back panel, it is steel, but it's um, copper coated. It does tend to sort of corrode. They all do this. This one's not too bad. You can see a little bit here and there. I don't believe there's any sort of way of rectifying that. Um, yeah, I guess probably humidity and salt air would probably make it worse. Fortunately, we don't have that sort of super bad here in Sydney where I am. But yeah, just one of those things, I guess. So that's the front and the rear of this AUX11. So now I'm going to do some performance tests, so stay along for that because this thing is a super high bandwidth amplifier and I just want to do some tests now that will demonstrate that bandwidth but also I want to do some um, total harmonic distortion testing as well, which I haven't done yet, just to evaluate what the distortion is like on this amplifier compared to some other ones that I've tested. Okay guys, so now I'm going to do some THD testing. So I've just got the gain bumped down using the jump button, so if I just turn that off, go back to normal gain, I've got this set for a 5 volt peak to peak output as you can see on the scope. So I'm using a 500 hertz reference tone out of the Keithley 2015, so this is how I've tested everything that I've tested for THD. If we come to the Keithley, so we see the reading does kind of bounce around a bit, but I'm going to take that as point zero one zero zero point zero one zero percent THD. So that's measuring the second harmonic. If I now change it to measure all harmonics, here we go, upper harmonic. Forty. Okay, so now it's measuring all of the harmonics, so what we call that. Mm. A little bit hard to tell because it's kind of bouncing around a fair bit, isn't it? Let's call it 0.26 or something like that. And so what I find comparing that to other devices that I've tested in terms of everything else I've tested, in terms of full range total harmonics, as in all harmonics, it equals everything that I've tested. In terms of second harmonic only, 
it is the best device that I have ever tested. Um, so the next closest was actually the NAD 3120. Um, it's preamp stage only, so it's probably not the fair test. If I look at an integrated, so the integrated was, yeah, the NAD 3120 was still the next best in terms of an integrated. So, yeah, I think that's pretty impressive, but not too unsurprising. So that's THD. So now I'm going to change the setup and we'll do some bandwidth tests. Okay, guys, so I've got the signal generator hooked up to this AUX11. So at the moment we are looking at the line input. So um, I have got a, this is a 500 hertz signal and I'm looking at the rise time, 92, 93 nanoseconds. So if I just go back to check the frequency, 500 hertz. If we go to rise time, rise time, we get rise time, 86, 87 nanoseconds. So that's what we're looking at. So now uh, what I want to do is channel two is connected to the dummy load that is the 8 ohm dummy load that is connected to the output. So I'm going to turn the amplifier on. And just give it a little bit of gain. Now, where's my channel 2 trace? Ah, oh, there it is down there. Oh, position. Okay, I just need to get it on the screen where I can actually see it. There we go, that's better. It was down in the dumps where I couldn't see it. So, uh, voltage. I want to have about a 5 volt peak to peak signal, so that's one volt. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, that's about five volts more or less. The voltage doesn't really matter that much. Um, so, what I want to look at now is the rise time on channel two. So, if we set channel measurement channel channel 2 that's interesting it's actually giving me a sorry yeah so that's 100 and got to get the brain into gear here guys 1.753 microseconds, that's 1756 nanoseconds. So if I want to go sort of this way, uh, position, slope rising,
Okay, so there we go. So that's the rise time of the signal coming out of this AUX11. So the reading does jump around um, somewhat, but I'll just see if I can maybe clear that up a little bit. Yeah, I think we'd generally say it looks like it's about 1.8 microseconds or something like that. Um, so, yeah. Let's just have a little bit of a look, see what happens when we put uh, some high frequencies through this. So I'm just going to measure frequency now. And let's just go up in frequency. So that's 5 kilohertz. 50 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz. And yeah, 500 kilohertz. It does kind of like drop off, as one would expect, I suppose. So... Of course, we're way out of sort of uh, audio frequency now. Like, there's 100 kilohertz there. Fifty kilohertz. Five kilohertz. Of course, you'd want these to be good because we're certainly well in the audio frequency range. So if I just leave it at ten kilohertz, if we just go back to um. Rise fall again, rise time. Yeah, about two microseconds. So yeah, there we go. So that's sort of some bandwidth testing on this AUX11, which is an especially high bandwidth amplifier. And we did some THD testing as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now.